this video discusses the critical autobiography Biographia Literaria by Samuel Taylor Coleridge. This work Biographia Literaria is published in the year 1817 in two volumes. Its working title was Autobiographia Literaria. The key figures involved in this work is David Hartley. David Hartley is an alumnus of Jesus College, Cambridge. David Hartley is best known for his philosophical ideas about psychology. Next is Immanuel Kant. Immanuel Kant, he is an eminent German philosopher. Immanuel Kant's idea of transcendental idealism influenced Coleridge ideas about transcendental philosophy. Coleridge also influenced by the work of Wordsworth's theory of poetry. This work of Biographia Literaria was originally intended as a preface to a collected volume of Coleridge's poem which explains and justifies his own style and practice in poetry. But the work grew to a literary autobiography. It covers his education and studies. It also talks about his early literary adventures and also briefs about William Wordsworth's criticism of theory of poetry as it is given in the preface to the Lyrical Ballads, which is collaborated both by William Wordsworth and Coleridge. Let's see the overview of Biographia Literaria. In this work, Coleridge, he explains about his successful political and poetic career during his lifetime. He also speaks about his education. As he was born in 1772, he gets his education at Christ Hospital after the death of his father. He also attends Jesus College, it's in Cambridge, between 1791 to 1794. And similarly, William Wordsworth was attending St. John's College at the same university. Both Coleridge and William Wordsworth was credited for founding the Romantic Movement with introducing German idealist philosophy to the English-speaking world that is Britain by influencing from American transcendentalism. Coleridge's best-known poems are The Rhyme of the Ancient Mariner, Christabel and Kubla Khan. He discusses about all these poems in his Biographia Literaria. This work, Biographia Literaria, is based on aesthetic theory. This work is very important because it is considered as an historical document. This work provides political ideas about the French Revolution and the American Declaration of Independence. Coleridge also uses 19th century philosophical ideas along with the perception of his friend. William Wordsworth. As Coleridge begins Biographia Literaria, he first speaks about his early education at Christ's Hospital Grammar School and the influences that he had on contemporary writers on developing minds. He points out the state of contemporary criticism and the men of genius in his work. And more importantly, while Wordsworth seeks to unite both prose and poetry, Coleridge, he distinguishes between prose and poetry, which is a metrical composition. Coleridge also gives example of failures in Wordsworth's work, but he proclaims that Wordsworth is capable of writing the first genuine philosophic poem, Coleridge also remarks some of his experiences that he had in, in his tour to Germany. He writes those memory in the form of epistolary form in a chapter entitled Satine's Letter. 
epistolary form meaning in the form of letter writing in the form of letter in this chapter he recalls the sailing experiences that he had up in the lb as german literati let us see the main theme of biographia literaria coleridge he offers a theory of creativity in his work he also divides imagination into primary and secondary as he divides imagination into two he says that primary imagination is common to all the human beings he also adds that this imagination helps the humans to perceive and make sense of the world whereas in secondary imagination he says that this imagination is a shaping and modifying power which helps to dissolve diffuse and dissipates in order to create artistic creation he says that secondary imagination makes artistic creation possible because it requires an effort of the will and conscious effort he adds saying that the secondary imagination is an echo of the primary imagination because primary imagination can be liked to poetic genius coleridge's idea of imagination is emerged from the discussions of immanuel kant johann fichte and friedrich joseph totally there are 24 chapters in this book let us see the important points that are dealt in this book in chapters 1 to 3 in these chapters coleridge he expresses and introduces his motives for writing this book biographia literaria the work addresses the commentaries of his own work and defines his philosophical and poetic principles in this chapter he says that when he was a student at christ hospital school he admired the manly simplicity of greek poetry in which every poetic choice had a logic he says that his school master reverend james bower he gave her firm grounding in classical languages to coleridge coleridge adds that the literary canon has given profound influence on the youthful poet's mind the meaning of literary canon refers to body of books narratives and other texts which are considered to be most important and influential coleridge admires his own work to bowles which he writes and published in 1794 he says that in this work to bowles he is saved from metaphysics Coleridge undervalued and appreciated the works of Alexander Pope. He adds saying that the conversation that he had with his friend William Wordsworth has enhanced Coleridge's appreciation for classical poetry. Coleridge also wants to seek a solid foundation on which permanently to ground his opinions. Here he sets two initial rules of poetics that is the greatest pleasure that possesses a genuine power another is the the sentiment that expressed the value in itself let us see the major points in chapters 4 to 6 in these chapters coleridge proclaims wordsworth as a genius and considers the subject that wordsworth has written in preface for lyrical ballads and the challenges for the critics coleridge discovered the poems of william wordsworth during his last year at cambridge university in the year 1794 at the age of 24 when he met met wordsworth he was particularly impressed by wordsworth's unpublished poem the female wagon coleridge says that the occasional obscurities of wordsworth's earlier writing were missing entirely in this poem 
Coleridge associates the Greek Panthasia, the meaning of Panthasia is imagination, with the Latin imaginatio. He compares the Greek Panthasia with the Latin imaginatio and imagination with fancy. The difference between Wordsworth and Coleridge is that Wordsworth's motivation in writing the preface was to only explore imagination which is manifested in poetry whereas Coleridge's intention was to investigate the seminal principle of poetic imagination. Chapter 7 to 9 Coleridge criticizes the ideas of Hartley about mental association which claims that they confuse the issue of casualty. Similarly, Coleridge disagrees with the work of David Hume. Then, Coleridge critiques the Cartesian dualism that is also called as substance dualism, which means mind-body dualism. And this dualism argues that there are two kinds of foundation, those are mental and physical. So, Coleridge did not agree to this. Coleridge also was not convinced by hylozoism and materialism. Hylozoism means in philosophy, any system that views all matter as alive. He finds hylozoism as muddy and materialism as it fails to explain the origin of consciousness. He says that the origin of consciousness remains as a problem. Let's see chapters 10 to 12. In these chapters, Coleridge breaks off his philosophical thoughts to return to the subject of imagination or plastic power. He once wrote for the publication called The Friend, which was actually devoted to metaphysical speculation. This work, The Friend, it prompts a discretion into advice to young authors who are seeking for publication. Here Coleridge tells an anecdote of an old clergyman whose self-published volume failed to sell and confesses that he had similar problems at the beginning of his literary career. Later, when he left Jesus College, Cambridge, he contributed to a periodical entitled The Watchman. Coleridge then opposed the French Revolutionary War and devoted himself to poetry. He then compares the writings of Edmund Brook at the onset of American War with the rhetoric of the French Revolution. At that time, Coleridge found Cowper's famous poem, The Task Awkward, and was inspired to work an unpublished poem entitled The Brook. This poem he dedicated to the Public Safety Committee. Just as a French philosopher, René Descartes, Coleridge speaks like a naturalist. He seeks to render the construction of the universe in an intelligible way through matter and motion. By observing the construction of universe, Coleridge tries to find transcendental philosopher seek to apprehend the self within infinite. Then Coleridge argues about imagination. He says that imagination is a living power and a prime agent of all human perception, while fancy is a mode of memory from the order of time and space. Then Coleridge takes up the subject of lyrical ballads and talks about the friendship between himself and William Wordsworth. Coleridge devotes himself to poetry, which he relates to the supernatural. But Wordsworth is inspired by the wonders of the everyday. Coleridge then speaks about the admiration that he has with William Wordsworth's poem. But then he disagrees with some of his works. Chapter 17 to 19. In this chapter, Coleridge debates about Wordsworth's idea about poetry. 
he says that Wordsworth has an idea of nationalistic poetic diction. Coleridge argues that Wordsworth's poems are not rustic in their effects. Rather, Wordsworth poetry is pleasurable due to three factors. Those factors are the naturalness of the subject matter, its representation and the transcendence of these. Coleridge compares and praises the balance of Wordsworth poem, Michael and the Thorn. Coleridge suggests that for these poems, Wordsworth should have spoken in his own voice rather taking nationalistic elements. Coleridge then doubts whether rustic language can be adapted for poetry differences or whether it can refine the forms of communication. He also doubts whether rustic objects can just make a formation and give the best part of the language. He also says that instead the best part of human language is derived from reflection on their own mindset itself. Coleridge then claims that Wordsworth is confused between real and common. He then declares that Wordsworth's poem are in the state of excitement because excitement arises from the appreciation of truth that lies in the sophistication of the pursuer. Let us see chapters between 20 and 22. Here Coleridge compares Wordsworth's poetry to Shakespeare. He claims that Wordsworth is more distinctive than any other contemporary writer and Wordsworth is more capable of eliciting a mediative mood in his readers. Also, Coleridge discusses the critical journals, the Edinburgh Review. He gives it as a best example. Here he claims that the critic must not mix literary criticism with personal injury. And the Edinburgh Review, though it is worthy, it is guilty of substituting assertion for agreement. Then Coleridge examines the defects that Wordsworth had in his poetry. The first flaw that he observes in Wordsworth poetry is that the inconsistency of the style which Coleridge finds distracting. The second defect is pragmatism. The meaning of pragmatism is thinking about solving problems in a practical and sensible way rather than by having fixed ideas. Between chapter 22 and 23, Coleridge adds Satine's letter. In this letter, he talks about his journey from Yarmouth to Hamburg on September 16, 1798. When he was on board, there were two Danish brothers who invited Coleridge to drink with them. Here Coleridge had a conversation about language phonetically. There were other invitees such as a Swede, a Prussian with another Englishman. He also recollects the experiences that he had in Albi. He then writes a letter to a lady from Radzeburg about the German language. In Hamburg, Coleridge is amused by the diversity of tra travelers from various nations. He discusses the differences between the genders and admires the nobility of a French man. Let us see chapter 23-24. Coleridge provides context for his letters from German. He turns to a discussion of Charles Maturin's play Bertram which was debuted in 1816. As he began to review German drama, he says that the elements of German drama are of the literary group of the Kessel of Oranto. Then he talks about the popular Spanish play, A Testa Fulminatio. He calls this play as so grotesque and extravagant. 
He then compares Don Juan with Milton's Satan. He says that intellectual power is the attraction of Shakespeare's main characters and enables the viewers and the listeners to suspend their disbelief. For example, he mentions the ghost that appears in jo Don Juan. Don Juan is a fictional character. He then talks about the moral that John Juan offers to the viewers. He says that John Juan has demonstrated utter indifference to vice and virtue. As Coleridge concludes, he talks about the association that he has with metaphysics. He then praises Wordsworth's mysticism and admits that metaphysics and psychology are his hobbies. Hope this video helps. If you have suggestions, please write it down on the comment section. Thank you for listening to us.